elemental halogens Br2 and Cl2 add to alkynes to give trans 1,2 dihaloalkenes. This occurs via a reaction with Markovnikov selectivity and anti-stereospecificity. This is what gives rise to the trans alkenes. We can see in this example reaction that the two atoms of X2 have added in an anti or trans fashion across the alkyne, leading to a trans alkene product. When only one equivalent of the elemental halogen is used in this reaction, it stops at the dihaloalkene. This is because each of the halogen atoms is inductively withdrawing, pulling electron density towards itself. This makes the double bond in the product a much worse nucleophile than the triple bond in the starting material. The electron withdrawing effect of the X groups makes the double bond a poor nucleophile. However, if we treat the alkyne with an excess of X2, using two equivalents or sometimes even more are necessary, a second equivalent of X2 is added to the dihaloalkene intermediate, and we end up with a product that contains four halogen atoms, a tetrahalide. We can even do fun things here like use one equivalent of one halide, let's say Br2, and make the second equivalent a different halogen completely, say Cl2. We end up with a situation where two chlorines have added at the two carbons of the alkyne in the second addition, and two bromines have added across the alkyne in the first addition. Because each addition occurs with anti-stereospecificity, we can even do this in such a way that we end up with a particular diastereomer of product. For example, we can imagine if this X atom adds from above the alkyne, that means that the other blue X atom must add from below, resulting in a product in which the blue X atoms are anti to each other and the green X atoms are anti to each other as they must be, as they must be since this reaction is anti-stereospecific. What mechanistically gives rise to the anti-stereospecificity of the reaction? In general, the way this occurs is through a cyclic three-membered ring intermediate analogous to the situation when alkenes are used. The alkyne donates a pair of electrons to one of the atoms of the elemental halogen, and at the same time, the elemental halogen rebounds back, forming a bond to the alkyne. This intermediate retains a pi bond within its three-membered ring. This is not great for a couple of reasons. First of all, this ring is heavily strained due to the painful bond angles at these circled carbons. And second of all, and this will make sense later when we discuss aromaticity, this intermediate has anti-aromatic character since there are four pi electrons within this cyclic pi system of this intermediate. In any case, it's not so unstable that it doesn't form, and this intermediate certainly explains the anti-stereospecific nature of this reaction. In the second step of the mechanism, X minus, generated in the first step, adds in an SN2 fashion to the intermediate. Because this occurs with inversion of configuration or via backside attack, we end up with a situation where the first X atom is anti or trans to the second X atom added across the alkyne. One alternative mechanism that's been proposed here that's analogous to hydrohalogenation is an ADE3 type mechanism where the nucleophile adds at the same time the electrophile adds in a single elementary step that also has an anti requirement for the orientations of the two X atoms added across the alkyne. This would lead directly in a single elementary step to the observed trans 1,2 dihaloalkene product. No matter the mechanism, the important point in halogenations of alkynes is that the two X atoms add across the alkyne in a trans or anti fashion, giving rise to trans 1,2 dihaloalkene products. 